This is the $600 WeWalk Smart Cane for the blind. It comes with loads of smart technological features like an ultrasonic sensor for obstacle detection, haptic feedback, a gesture-based touchpad to control certain actions on the device, and even GPS navigation. And did I mention this device costs 600 US dollars. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at the device and showing you what it's like to use it, but spoiler alert, it is absolutely not worth the money. Just look at it. It feels cheap and unacceptable for $600. And listen to that rattle. Like seriously, this just sounds like a toy. And for contrast, I have my cane from Ambutech here. Just a dumb one, no electronics. It's sturdy, it's reliable, and costs a fraction of the price at roughly 30 US dollars. The ultrasonic sensor on the WeWalk cane is supposed to detect obstacles ahead of the user and use the haptic feedback vibration motors to vibrate the cane to alert the user to obstacles that are up ahead. But in my experience using it, particularly when I'm walking a little bit fast, the vibration feedback just comes way too late and my cane is already touching the object by the time the vibration is going off. So one set of obstacles that these kinds of ultrasonic sensors tend to struggle with, especially when they're angled like that, is objects that are low to the ground. So for example, we have a set of benches here. I'm going to see if the WeWalk can detect that the bench is there. So let me get up close to it. And even though I'm touching it and banging onto it, it's not really thick. Uh, it's not really picking up the fact that the bench is here. In fact, I have to actually tilt the cane like this. Oh, it's not even doing it. Like that. For it to register that the bench is there, in which case it's kind of like a, what's the point? I feel like the ultrasonic sensor is not really placed at an ideal position to be picking up objects around the user. From my experience using products that have ultrasonic sensors and also working with ultrasonic sensors, this one probably needs to stick out a little bit more so it can have a better vantage point for identifying obstacles in front of the user. And then there's this thing here. It's the control panel that uses touch-based gestures to control the device. But it just feels like there's a hundred different gestures that you have to learn. And honestly, it's just really distracting when you're trying to use it and walk at the same time. Okay, I might be exaggerating, but the reality is it's really asking a lot out of the user to memorize all of these gestures. The thing is, I don't feel like the gestures are really useful. They enable you to control the device so you don't have to take out your phone while you're walking. You know, I don't want to be distracted while I'm walking, trying to play with the gestures on this device. I just want to focus on one thing at one time for safety reasons. And again, for safety, if I really need to use my phone, I'd rather just stand to the side where I'm safe and then I can take out my phone and use it properly. I honestly went into this wanting to like this device, but it just needs a lot of improvements before it's even a workable product. First, the build just needs to be improved. Seriously, the rattling is unacceptable and it is extremely noisy when you're trying to use it. Like, let me try to get you to listen to what it sounds like. and it rattles as well when you're doing that, which can interfere with the haptic feedback that the device is supposed to be giving you in the first place. In comparison, we have this, which is the Ambutech cane that I showed earlier. And this is what it sounds like when you're using it normally. Much quieter in comparison. Second, this thing is just really way too big. What we what could do is just cut out some of the features. For example, I really don't think the touchpad is very useful. Taking it out would downsize the device physically and also probably cut down on the cost. I recognize that some people might actually like this touchpad feature and that's perfectly fine. What WeWalk could do is make a WeWalk Lite with the features that I just mentioned, which would cut down on both the price and the size of the device. I think that's a reasonable compromise. And the last note, I have mentioned this a few times already, but the price absolutely needs to come down. I understand it's really expensive to make assistive devices, but many people with disabilities are just not going to have $600 to spend on an optional assistive device when a cheaper alternative exists. This in particular makes WeWalk's claim that it will change the lives of all blind people all over the world just a little bit um, 
tone deaf. It's great to see new and innovative solutions geared towards blind people like me, and the company is even founded by a blind person as well. But the WeWalk feels like anything but smart, and if I was asked to pay for this at its full retail price, I would have felt like a total fool. Now just one final note, a huge thanks to the people from SG Enable's Tech Enable Assistive Device Library for loaning me this device. I did not buy it, I'm glad I didn't, and thanks to my friends over there. And also, thank you for watching. If you'd like to stay notified about my future uploads where I talk about what it's like to live with blindness from my point of view, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!